My topic today is do-it-yourself wills, DYI, don't do it. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney who has practiced law in San Antonio, Texas for more than three decades. I'm here to tell you that it is very important for everyone to have a will, and it's very important to have an attorney draw up that will for you. These days I understand DYI, do it yourself, is very popular. And on YouTube, you can figure out how to do just about anything from changing a tire to making a birdhouse to whatever you wanna do. You can look up something that will give you instructions on YouTube or on the internet. And there are lots of wills forms on the internet as well. But those wills forms on the internet can get you into more trouble than you can imagine. Now, everyone needs a will. First, I, I hear a lot of excuses for people that say, well, I don't have any property or I'm young. I don't have a reason to have a will just yet. I'll do that later when I'm old. I had a mother come and see me recently. Her son was 25 years old, never been married, didn't own a house, didn't have any kids, and he was tragically killed in a car accident. Now, he did have a job, and he had a bank account, and the employer owed him some money for his last two weeks' salary. He had a 401k or retirement plan that the employer was contributing to at his job, and because he was killed wrongfully in an automobile accident that, where he was not at fault, there was the possibility of a lawsuit where his mother could make an insurance claim and possibly collect some money for his death. However, in order to do that, she first had to take his case through probate. Now, if he had had a will, the probate process would have cost her about 2,500 to maybe $3,000 total, including fees and expenses. And she could have been appointed within two weeks of when she filed and been in charge of his estate and been able to manage the settlement of the insurance claim for his death and collect the property that was in his name. But because he did not have a will, it took over a year and a half to settle that probate matter before she could even start on the claim for the insurance. And not only did it take a lot of time, a lot of hassle, a lot of stress, but it cost her almost $15,000. So the difference between having a will and not having a will was about $12,000 in that case. A simple will might have cost him anywhere from $350 to $500. And, and you know, it could have been as simple as saying, I leave everything to my mom and my mom's in charge of the estate. It's not that complicated, but it has to be done right. And that leads me to my second point is get a, a lawyer to help you do it. The probate law is the most unforgiving area of the law. In most areas of the law, such as divorce or contract disputes, just about any kind of lawsuit that comes up, the judge has laws that he has to follow, but the judge also has what's called equity, or the right to decide what's fair under the circumstances, and the right to look at what the parties intended, even if that's not what they actually said. But that's not so in probate. In probate, you have to say it, you have to say it in the right words, and not only that, it has to be signed in the right order, in the right time, the right place. The law is very strict when it comes to probating wills. A Texas attorney would know what is required in Texas. When you get a will online, you don't know if it was even written by a Texas attorney. In fact, you don't know if it was written by an attorney at all, but it could have been somebody out of state who was totally unfamiliar with Texas laws. And there are things in our Texas laws which make probate much easier than if you were not in Texas. And if you don't have it written to have all of the elements that are required in Texas, the will's no good. It doesn't matter if it looks like a will, if it sounds like a will, if you intended it to be a will. If the judge determines that you have not done everything that's required for a Texas will under the Texas statutes, then it gets thrown out, there is no will, and you died without a will, 
and we have to go through a much more expensive and lengthy process. You will have no way of knowing that because there won't be any evaluation by the judge until after you're dead and then it's too late to fix it. So it is definitely worth the peace of mind to have a lawyer who knows what they're doing to draw up your will, make sure that it's signed in the right way, that it says the right things. For example, there has been a ruling where someone said in their will, I leave, I wish to leave my property to who so and so. And they said, no, that doesn't do it. You don't say, I wish to leave. You have to say, I leave it to them. Simple things like that, that you wouldn't even think would matter. They matter a lot. There is a case where someone was in the hospital and the witnesses were down the hall. So the the testator signed the will in their hospital bed and somebody carried the will down the hall to the witnesses who signed it in another room outside the testator's presence. That will got thrown out. It was determined to be an invalid will. Even though it looked like a good will on its surface, everything was said correctly, everything was signed in the right places, it was notarized, but the will was no good because the witnesses didn't watch the testator sign and he didn't watch the witnesses sign. So there are a lot of little picky rules like that that you will have no way of knowing if you're just filling out a form on the internet. So my name is Laura Hurd. My website is www.ldherd.com. And please call me and let's talk about doing a will for you. Thank you.